Hi, it's Tarrant. And Stella from Ripple University on the Dice Tower. Today we'll be teaching you how to play Catacombs Cubes, a game designed by Ken Vallis and Aaron West and published by Elsra Corp. Let's get to the table. Catacombs Cubes is a drafting and construction game for one to four players set in the world of Catacombs. In the game, players will draft building resources from the quarry and then fit them together in order to construct different buildings or contribute to the palace. All of this will earn victory points and other bonuses for the players. The game ends once a certain number of buildings have been constructed and the player with the most victory points wins. There are a few different variations on the base rules for Catacombs Cubes. And so in this video, I'm going to go through one set of rules first and then teach you the variants. The base rules I'll teach will use the quarry dice rather than the tiles and will utilize the more aggressive competitive resource rule rather than the more friendly passive resource rule. What all of this means will become clearer later on. To set up the main board, each player places a scoring marker on zero of the score space and a smaller palace marker on zero on the palace track. Shuffle all of the blue village structure tiles and then place one onto each of these four blue colored spaces as well as one on the white space. The ones in the blue spaces are the structures currently in play and the one in the white space is the next structure in play. Place the rest of the deck face up near the board. Shuffle the pink palace tiles and place two of them face up in this space. The rest are returned to the box. All players take a player board and then agree whether all players will use the symmetrical coin side or the asymmetrical resources side. If you choose the asymmetrical side, place the matching resources in your construction yard. And if you choose the symmetrical side, each player places one of each coin in their coin chest. Shuffle the purple residence tiles and then deal each player one at random and return the rest to the box. Each player takes a little house shaped residence token in their color and choose a player to take the quarry foreman token in the first round. Set the quarry board and the quarry dice nearby. Use all eight dice in a four player game and return the purple dice in a two or three player game. Set the six piles of quarry resources nearby and place the starting town hall tile, which shows this image on both sides, in the center of the table. You're now ready to play. Catacombs Cubes is played in rounds. At the start of each round, the player with the quarry foreman token rolls all of the quarry dice and then arranges them into pairs on the quarry board by their color. The quarry foreman then has the option to make one swap of dice, exchanging their relative positions on this grid. The different columns now represent the different quarry offers available in this round. Then each player takes one turn, starting with the player to the left of the quarry foreman and finishing with the quarry foreman. On a turn, a player must take one main action, which must be either to draft one of the quarry offers, taking the matching resources from the supply, or foregoing the quarry offers to spend resources and build a structure. On their turn, a player may also spend any number of coins to take the corresponding coin actions, either before or after the main action. Once all players have taken a turn, the round is over. The quarry foreman marker is handed one step to the left around the table, and a new round begins with the dice rolled once again. So now let's look at each of these actions in detail. The first main action is to draft a quarry offer, and the simplest of these is if the offer depicts specific quarry resources. To do this, you simply take the quarry resources shown on the dice and add them to the construction yard area of your player board. There are actually two locations on your player board for quarry resources, your construction yard and your warehouse. Unless otherwise stated, resources that you gain will go into your construction yard. Moving them to your warehouse requires a different action, which we'll talk about later. This can be worth doing because any resources in your warehouse are safe from being lost or stolen by other players, while anything in your construction yard might be at risk. 
With the exception of the single cube obsidian, most of the quarry resources are quite limited, with only five or six available in the game. If you ever need to draft a resource and there are none left, then you must steal it from the construction yard of another player. This is one reason why moving resources to your warehouse keeps them safe. If there are none of the matching resource available in any other player's construction yards, then you receive nothing for that die. If you draft the die showing this icon, then you may take any quarry resource currently in the quarry supply and add it to your construction yard. You're not allowed to steal from another player using this die. If you draft a die with this icon, that allows you to optionally chisel one cube off an existing quarry resource that you hold. For example, you could knock this cube off to turn this piece into this one, or knock this cube off to turn this piece into this one. The smaller piece goes in the construction yard or the warehouse, whichever one the larger piece was already in. You do not get to keep the cube that was chiseled off. Assume it was destroyed in the chiseling process. The final icon that's available is this one, which allows you to start contributing to the construction of the palace. I haven't spoken about the palace yet, and so I'll come back and talk about this action a little bit later in the video. The only important thing to know at this point is that if you draft an offer with these two icons, you must resolve this one before this one. The other option for a main action is to build a structure tile. A player who chooses this option does not take a quarry offer from the quarry board. However, the quarry foreman does get to remove one of the quarry offers from the board after the player takes the action. This means that the number of quarry offers available on a player's turn does not depend on the actions taken by previous players. A player who is constructing a structure may choose from their personal residence tile or any one of the village tiles in the four blue bordered spaces. The tile on the white bordered space is not available. For both options, the player must construct the structure shown from the pieces currently in either their construction yard or warehouse. The end result must be a freestanding structure capable of supporting its own weight under gravity without support from the player's hands. There will be many different ways that each structure could be built. Return all quarry resources used in the structure to the supply, as well as any leftover quarry resources in your construction yard, with the exception of the single cube obsidian. Resources in your warehouse are retained, which is the other major reason why you'll want to move resources into your warehouse. Now, score the rewards for the tile and add it to the village. The star represents victory points which are gained immediately, so this structure would be worth 7 victory points. These are marked on the central board. Village structures will also give you an additional bonus. The easiest level 1 buildings will give you a new obsidian resource which you can place straight into your warehouse. The medium level 2 structures will let you contribute to the palace, which is this icon we saw before and we'll describe later and the hardest level 3 structures will let you take any resource from the quarry into your construction yard. Exactly the same as this die face. Next, flip the tile over and place it anywhere into the village, which grows out from the town hall tile which was placed at the start of the game. If this was your purple residence tile, then take your residence marker, the little house, and place it onto this square in the upper left corner. This will not be present on the blue village tiles. As players collectively build up the village, there are only three restrictions in the placement of tiles. Firstly, that each tile must be placed orthogonally adjacent to at least one existing tile. Secondly, it must be placed the right way up according to the art, so roofs on top and ground on the bottom. And thirdly, you cannot go outside the confines of the village, which is a 4x4 grid in a 2 or 3 player game, and a 5x4 grid in a 4 player game. If you place your tile next to another player's residence tile, then the owner of that residence gets to take one resource from the quarry into their construction yard. Again, the same as the effect from this die. You do not get this benefit for placing next to your own residence. Finally, the player placing the tile will gain connector bonuses, based on these connectors on the edges of the tile. 
you'll see that the connectors are present on the blueprint side of the tile and will be in the same locations when you flip it over to the constructed side. For each connector where the colors match, you gain that color's connector bonus twice. For each connector where the colors do not match, you gain one of those two connector bonuses once. So here, you would gain two silver bonuses and either a black or a blue. The black connector bonus is an obsidian cube gained straight into the player's warehouse. The yellow connector bonus is an additional victory point and the blue, silver and red connector bonuses are coins in the matching color. Coins are added to the player's coin chest and you may choose whether to play with face up or face down coins. Finally, if one of the village tiles was constructed, move the next in waiting village tile onto a blue space and then the top tile from the village stack onto the white space. If you construct your purple residence, you do not get another one of these tiles. These are one per player per game. On your turn, in addition to your main action, you may take any number of coin actions by spending your coins. Each of the three colored coins has a specific action associated with it. And there are also actions you can take by spending face down coins without revealing the color. You may choose to spend any two coins to buy an obsidian resource which is placed in your warehouse. Or spend any three coins to buy any resource from the quarry, which again is placed straight into your safe warehouse. You can spend any two coins to buy another coin of a different color. And you can give one coin to the quarry foreman in order to swap any two dice in the quarry offers. The quarry foreman cannot refuse this coin, known as the bribe, and it gives you the opportunity to set up a very powerful quarry offer for yourself. Then there are the three actions which are specific to their color of coin. Spending a silver coin allows you to move any one resource from your construction yard to your warehouse. Spending a blue coin allows you to chisel one cube off one of your pieces. Similar to taking this die, but you do a much better job and get to keep the piece that you chisel off. Both pieces remain wherever the original piece was in your construction yard or warehouse. Finally, the red coin allows you to contribute to the construction of the palace, and this is what we'll talk about now. At any given time during the game, there will be one palace available for construction, but there can be a total of two palaces built during the game. These will be built in these two spaces. There are three ways in the game to contribute to a palace. Through this die action, through this building bonus, and by spending a red coin. With one of these two bonuses, you take an obsidian cube from the supply and add it to the palace. When spending a red coin, you take a quarry resource from your player board and add it to the palace. Palace pieces cannot be moved once they've been placed, and each piece which is placed must contribute positively towards the construction of that palace. It is not permissible to make a placement which makes the palace unable to be finished. Whenever a player adds a piece to a palace, that player advances on the palace track in the middle of the board by a number of spaces equal to the number of cubes in the piece that was placed. So this bamboo piece would involve moving three steps while placing an obsidian would give you one. Immediately gain any bonus that your cube crosses, which will be either victory points or obsidian added to your warehouse. So for this most recent placement, the player would have gained two points and one obsidian. As you can see from the track, early on you'll gain one point for every two cubes you contribute, but if you contribute more than 10 cubes to a palace, then you'll be getting one point per cube, a very good return. When a palace is completed, then the player who placed the final bricks scores bonuses as usual and then resolves the palace. The player scores the points shown on the tile, then takes the tile, flips it over, and adds it to the village, scoring connector bonuses and triggering residence bonuses. After resolving all of the rewards, then all players' cubes are returned to the start of the palace track for the next palace. 
the quarry resources which went into the construction of the palace stay on this space. They are out of the game, making all of those a little bit scarcer. Then start building the second palace the same way that you built the first. Once both palaces have been completed, players may still continue to take palace actions, but they'll simply return the resources to the quarry supply. They'll still advance on the palace track and gain the rewards as printed, but will not gain any more benefits once they reach 20 on the palace track. The end of the game is triggered when the village is complete, which is a 5x4 grid in a 4 player game, or a 4x4 grid in a 2 or 3 player game. Then proceed to end of game scoring. If you've been playing with face down coins, then flip them face up and resolve each colour of coin for majorities. Take the blue coins as an example. The player with the most coins of a given colour gains 5 points. The player with the second most gains three points, and the player with the third most gains two. In the event of a tie, such as here for first place on red coins, the tied players both gain the higher number of points. So in this case, five points each. Players with no coins in a given colour, such as these players with red, gain no points for that colour. After resolving all three colours of coins, the player with the highest score wins. In the event of a tie, the player with the most total leftover coins is the winner, and if still tied, the player who is furthest on the final palace track breaks the tie. If still tied, victory is shared. Players who want to play a friendlier variant of the game can use the passive resource rule rather than the competitive resource rule. Under these rules, when you draft a quarry resource which is not available, you do not steal from another player. Instead, you take the next strongest available resource which is still in the quarry supply, starting from this end and decreasing in quality down to this end. Additionally, when a player constructs a structure as their main action, instead of the quarry foreman choosing any one of the quarry offers to remove, these are removed automatically from left to right. Do note though that the quarry foreman still gets to choose the left to right order of the placed dice pairs. As mentioned before, players may collectively choose to play with either face up or face down coins. Using face down coins makes the final majority count for coins less predictable, while using them face up allows you to respond directly to your opponents. When playing with face down coins, remember that the only actions which require you to reveal a coin are the three coin colored actions. For all other actions, you can discard the coins face down. The other variation you can use is to set up the quarry offer using tokens rather than dice. To set up, shuffle all of the quarry tokens into decks. Then at the start of each round, the quarry foreman begins by dealing tokens from the top of the decks into the brown bordered spaces until there are three pairs in a two or three player game or four pairs in a four player game, much like the dice. Then the quarry foreman takes the next tile looks at it secretly, and then places it face down into one of the columns. This is repeated until all of the columns are filled. A face down tile cannot be moved once it's been placed. Then, again, starting with the player to the left of the quarry foreman and going around the table clockwise, players choose their quarry orders, but when taking from a column, the player may choose only two of the three tiles. If the player drafts the face down one, it must be revealed to the other players before being taken. At the end of the round, all tiles, drafted or otherwise, are revealed and then discarded to a discard pile. These are shuffled back into the draw decks only once the draw decks are empty. And that's how to play Catacombs Cubes. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you enjoyed this video, please help us by hitting that like button and subscribe to the Dice Tower if you haven't already done so. And finally, if you have any questions, comments or feedback, please write them in the comment section below. Until next time!